For the first time in a great war, there was no front line, and the battle was waged on our own doorsteps. The Luftwaffe did its worst, with inhuman success. In the May Blitz alone, 3,966 people in the four Merseyside boroughs lost their lives, and 3,812 were seriously injured. 10,000 of their homes were completely destroyed, and 184,000 damaged, a catastrophe from which it would seem almost impossible to recover. So the local people, the war wasn't on foreign lands, it was here. Um, they were on the receiving end of, uh, of the bombing campaign. So it wasn't a distant something for them. in that the local authorities of the time kept fantastic records um, to do with how they prepared for war from 1938 onwards, um, what happened in the war, um, and they've, they've recorded lots of uh, information in a variety of ways. We've actually used those resources um, to put together a little bit of a booklet uh, called Sefton at War, uh, which um, highlights each individual area in Sefton and what they used, to, what they got up to. Because there's lots that were going on. It wasn't just um, soldiers going off to fight. Um, we were we were dealing with evacuation. We were dealing with civil defence. Um, there was rationing. Lots and lots of different stories going on all across Sefton. Each township is unique in what they got up to. For Bootle, the story was both about the bombing, um, particularly in 1941, but also about the fight back because the Battle of the Atlantic was actually coordinated from the Bootle docks and from Bootle Town Hall. The Battle of Britain was won. The Battle of the Atlantic had now to be fought. We've got very good connections with um, the main commander of the Battle of the Atlantic, Captain Johnny Walker, who, who actually lived right next to Bootle Town Hall and spent a lot of his time there when he was inshore. So Bootle's got two really good connections with the war. For Bootle, unfortunately, because it was so heavily bombed, over 80% of the houses were damaged, which meant that around about 20,000 people were left homeless after the war. And there's some really horrific stories, um, particularly from the May Blitz of 1941, where wave after wave of enemy bombers tried to flatten Bootle. For example, on, on the night of the 7th of uh, May, um, the main morgue in Bootle was hit. Uh, there were over 100 bodies there of civilians at the time. Um, and they were all, you couldn't identify the bodies. Uh, and they had to be put into a mass grave. There were other incidences where one of the main air raid shelters, it's called the Co-op Air Raid Shelter, just off Stanley Road, that received a direct hit and everyone was killed in there. So there's some really poignant stories. Over 3,800 bombs were dropped on, on Crosby and Waterloo during the war. A lot of residents were killed in Crosby. Um, it could be argued that, that, that the raids were actually targeting the docks of Bootle and that they just missed their target. But actually Crosby also had a legitimate military target as well because uh, in Blundell Sands there were Fort Crosby uh, which was the main defence for the River Mersey. 
So there were actually coastal batteries uh, housed at Fort Crosby. Um, and they could have been the target of the air raids as well. Fortunately, like Bootle, a lot of the uh, children from Crosby were evacuated and they were ev evacuated to Formby and um, to Southport, but some of them also were, were sent to North Wales. McCull and Aintry actually, during the latter part of the war, became almost like uh, an American enclave. There were so many serv American servicemen based in McGull uh, and from based in Aintree Racecourse. Um, that the whole t both towns were flooded with personnel. Interestingly, one of the black regiments from the American army was actually based in McGull. Uh, and we've got some really good photos of them marching through the town, um, which is quite an unusual sight. The role of Southport is actually overlooked a lot of the time. And there is this urban myth that um, Southport was never bombed in World War II. It simply isn't true. We've got a ledger here that shows um, all the bombs that were dropped, all the air raids that took place, and there were hundreds of them. On one night in, 19, in April 1941, there were over 39 air raids recorded in Southport. Uh, and on that night, uh, the, the Sunshine Home for Blind Babies was actually hit by two incendiary bombs. Um, no, none of the babies were killed, but a couple of the nurses were. Um, so urban myths like that often spring up, but we've got the facts to prove they're not right. In World War II, uh, Formby was still quite a large village, really. Um, but it really did its bit during the war. Um, not only did it uh, host lots of evacuated children coming from Bootle and Crosby, um, but it also uh, had a military purpose as well. Um, in the Pine Woods in Formby, um, there was a military uh, operation called Operation Starfish which was to set up a decoy of the Liverpool docks. The idea was that um, by setting up some dummy lights and things like that, the enemy planes would be drawn to the pine woods, drop their bombs on the pine woods where no one would be hurt um, and miss the docks. And in fact, on one night, this did happen. We're not sure if it was by design or, or the crew were just dumping their, their bombs, but the pine woods were bombed. Um, Formby also, um, hosted a secret radar station um, on the beach uh, in a hotel called Stella Maris. Uh, that, was that was turned over to the army um, and they set up a secret radar station there uh, that the Germans never found out about throughout the whole war.